Man, the last thing on earth I want to do is talk about that game. Should the Leafs trade Mitch Marner for Noah Hannafin? Apparently the second last thing I want to do is talk about that game. Hi! Leafs Nation! Dan Witness for Austin Lucas! Oh, 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 oh. Austin Matthews is the Leafs! Why do I watch hockey? Stressfully, mostly. Oh, you no, in no, Stop me if you've heard this before. Leafs lose 6-3. to three. Hey, Oh, I'm going to change the team name to the Carolina Hurricanes. How about you just buckle up? Because I'm going to talk about the Leafs' worst game of the season. The Leafs' worst game of the season so far. And the Leafs' worst game that will be this season. I'm guaranteeing it right now that will be the Leafs' worst game of the season. Oh, I like this new big and brash Steve. Now that the Leafs are good, he's making all these bold proclamations. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not the Leafs. I have confidence in. No, no, what I have confidence in is Mike Babcock putting his foot through the jock of every player on that roster. Okay, maybe not every player, but wow was that game terrible. Wow were they bad, and wow was that the worst game of the season so far. And they lost two other games 6-3. to three. Did I mention that? I did. A couple times this season, Babcock said, well, we were unprepared. And one time he even said, and that's on me. Leafs were outshot 16-15 to 15 in the first period in this game, and that might not sound that bad to you, and it's not. They only got outshot by one shot. But first periods, which the Leafs, and particularly Austin Matthews, always seem to score in have actually been a problem. Or at least that's what I've been thinking to myself for a while and before I shot this video I had to look it up and I was pretty stunned at what I found. Guess how many times through 10 games the Leafs have outshot their opponent. Go ahead and guess. What are you going to say? The Leafs are 7-3? and three, Maybe 7? Well Steve seems to be going somewhere with this. Maybe it's lower than I expected. Maybe it was 5 or it was 4. 2! The unstoppable goofy crazy Disney World offense that the Leafs have twice has outshot their opponent so far. In game two of the season, the Leafs outshot the Rangers 18 to 12 in the first period before choking on a 5-1 lead, and they eventually came back and won. They outshot the Devils 13 to 10 in the first period of their fourth game, a game that they lost six to three as well. And that was the last time the Leafs outshot an opponent in the first period. It's been six games since they've done it. In game six against Washington, they tied 7-7, ooh. But check out the last four games, 11 to five against Detroit, 13 to 8 against the Sens, 17 to 10 against the Kings, and 16 to 15 against the Hurricanes. Outshot 124 to 102 in the first period on the season, and 57 to 38 over their last four. And I know they're seven and three on the season, but the Leafs lost two of the last four. Two of the last three, as a matter of fact. And I say all that before even talking about the game, because this game is a wake-up call to things the Leafs have been doing wrong all season. Early in the first period, the Leafs have a fourth line shift. The fourth line wasn't even that bad in this game. They were bad in this play, leaving Josh George wide open. Beautiful one-timer. Freddie, I will give you that one. one nothing Hurricanes. Just 33 seconds later, Tavo Taravainen takes a shot from the slot. Looks like a weak goal, but it bounces off Jake Gardner's knee. Goes between the wickets of Freddie Anderson. You know what? Freddie, I'll give you that one too. First goal was poor coverage. Second goal was a deflection. Leafs being too soft in front of their own net. Again, all right, Freddie, I, I get it. I get it. You're not the problem here. I can't believe Steve is actually... Just wait. And besides, it's okay. It's okay. A 2 nothing lead that early is nothing because it's the Leafs. They can score their way out of problems. In the slot alone, Austin Matthews doing Austin Matthews things. He's a Leaf, by the way, and the Leafs are within one. There you go. Scoring their way out of problems. They only need one more. Sebastian Ajo with the shot from the front. Elias Lindholm tips it past Anderson. I Again, soft in front. Again, a tip-in goal. The Leafs allow how many of these a game? Freddie! I'll give you that one, too. Another tip-in. You're making it too hard on Freddie. And now the Leafs are down two again. Oh, my God. How, they got to score their way out of this problem. And by the way, related to my first period shots rant, the Leafs were outscored three to one in this period. I know that's not normal, and the Leafs typically score a lot in the first period, but they were bad. And when Babs says they're not prepared, well, it looks like by the numbers, they're often not prepared. But it's okay. It's okay. Second period is coming, and Operation Score Your Way Out of Problems is underway. Dominic Moore breaks into the zone. Matt Martin shoots stopped by Scott Darling and Moore puts in the rebound redeemed for earlier and the fourth line gets a goal another goal and the Leafs are within one operation scoring your way out of problems well underway a few minutes later Gardner puts it on Zach Hyman gets a rebound on the backhand Leafs have tied up the game not even halfway through the game told you operation score your way out of problems no big deal 3-3 isn't that hilarious isn't that hilarious we were doing all this ranting all the first period and so many problems dude score your way out of those problems not 
even halfway through the game. What were you yelling about before? Just a few minutes after they tie it though, Borgman gives it away behind the net. Pass in front, Victor Rask from the slot and he scores. The Hurricanes are back on top, 4-3. Would have been nice if Borgman didn't give away the puck there. That, that would have been nice. Would, would have been nice if someone, maybe Matthews, maybe one of the forwards picked up Rask in the slot. That, that would have been nice. You know what else would have been nice? A save. A save would have been nice. No, no, I get it. Wide open in the slot and then there was a giveaway, I get it. But just like last season, the Leafs defense is young and notably not even that good. In their own end, at least. They can move the puck. Oh, they can move the puck like madmen. I think they're some of the best in the league in that category. But the defenders in their own end, the forwards coming back to support them, not the strongest. When you have a team like that, you need your goalie to make an occasional save. And last season, although not always, Freddie Anderson was there to make the save. In fact, I skipped right over it. Freddie Anderson made an amazing save shortly after the Leafs made it 2-1. His save of the year, sprawling down and out and he makes the save and keeps the Leafs in it and it wasn't until another Leafs mistake, another deflection right after that that the Hurricanes got their two goal lead back. That was a save. Thank you for that save. But now it's a new game, it's a tie game and they needed a save. That's okay, that's okay. We're going to the third period and Operation Score Your Way Out of Problems is back underway. I'd rather you not have to score your way out of problems but don't forget that Matt Martin was Brad Pitt from Inglorious Bastards for Halloween, and you know how you get to Carnegie Hall, don't you? Practice. Third period underway, a few minutes have passed. Operation Score Your Way Out of Problems hasn't worked yet, but it, it, it will. There's lots of time. Ron Hainsey gets caught a little bit, and there's a slight odd man rush, but for the most part, it's negated. It's mostly just Brock McGinn against Morgan Riley. Maybe Riley could have played him a little tighter? Maybe? He got a clean shot off. Brock McGinn snipes that beats Freddie Anderson, and guess what, Leafs? Two goal deficit again. And like I said, hey, hey, there's some things that, that could have gone a little differently on that play and, and would have made things a little easier. And give Brock McGinn full credit, full marks. That was a good shot. But the guy had seven goals last season and 10 in his 84 game NHL career. A save there not only would have been big, but it would have kept the Leafs in this hockey game. Just down one goal with plenty of time left in the third. A few minutes later, Tyler Bozak with a giveaway behind the net. Just mindless play, no communication there with Ron Hainsey and the Hurricanes have the puck. Juris gets the puck, open in the slot. All right. Yes this, yes that, yes that. You have to stop that puck in the NHL, especially if you're Frederick Anderson. Think of last season, not necessarily the start of it, but think of last season and think of the playoffs. Frederick Anderson stops that shot. Frederick Anderson stops a lot of shots. But we're 10 games in now. Yes, the Leafs have a winning record. Record. Yes, a lot can be blamed on the defense and lots of other things, but wow, wow, wow. Worst game of the season for the Leafs. Worst game of the season, though, by far, for Freddie Anderson, in my opinion. Boy, it would have been nice if you stopped that Victor Rass shot. Boy, it would have been nice if you stopped that Brock McGinn shot. Wow, do you have to stop that Josh George shot. You stop that very stoppable shot, the Leafs are still in it. They could theoretically tie it because they are a crazy team. Nope, it was dead after that. I'm surprised Babcock didn't give him the hook. Now, having said that, I'm going to calm a few Leaf fans down a little bit. Yeah. Frederick Anderson's numbers are bad. Yeah, this was his worst game of the season. But here are the four previous games. Two goals against, six goals against, three goals against, and a shutout. The Leafs have actually scored three goals or more in every single game so far this season, except for one. In games where the Leafs have four goals or more, they're undefeated. In games where the Leafs have three goals or less, they are two and three. They have a losing record. But out of those five games, they had three goals in four of them, and they still lost. They ironically won the one time they didn't score three goals, that 2 nothing shutout win against Washington. Sorry, sorry, I'm trying to tell you good news. Frederick Anderson heading into this game was actually kind of on the uptick. In the four games before this one, 126 saves on 136 shots. That is a save percentage of 926. If you include this game over his last five, he's in 908, so that's not as good. Look, this team is not perfect. This team makes blunders and needs to be better. Wow. Like, I'm sorry. Pull didn't magically solve their defensive issues. They could still really use a strong right-handed defensive presence, maybe even left-handed. Although maybe we need to be patient with Borgman. We've seen flashes here. He's young. He's going to make mistakes. I still think he'll turn into something. But on their back end, and boy did it show against Carolina, they are outclassed. Carolina Hurricanes fans, if I were you, wow, 
how would I be so excited for my team? I know your record's not that fantastic right now, but what a team. They're not perfect, they're a little chaotic, sometimes they're sloppy, but what an annoying team. If Carolina can just make it to the playoffs, they're going to cause some damage. No one wants any part of the team I saw tonight. Oh, you think you got something? Go stick! Oh, you hear I come as a stick! Oh, here I gotta escort you stick! Sticks everywhere, forechecking all the time, they give you no room to breathe. That is an exhausting team with no real holes. And like Nick Kiprios wisely mentioned on the broadcast, Scott Darling is able to make some saves that Cam Ward just didn't make. It's a tough conference and you're in a crazy tough division, but if the Hurricanes make the playoffs, whoever they face, win or lose, is going to hate them. And if you're a Hurricanes fan, that should excite you. And looking at the ages of the guys they have in the roster, if they don't get in this year, next year's going to be a problem. Oh, not for you Hurricanes fans, for the rest of the league, I mean. Now, there is a play that we skipped over that we should talk about, and it was kind of pivotal in this game. Hurricanes flip the puck over the glass, two minutes for you can't do that, delay of game. Leafs on the power play, Tyler Bozak gets kicked out of the faceoff dot, no matter, Naz is going to win this. In fact, just heading into this game, Chris Johnson said that Nazem Kadri said he cheats more in the faceoff dot, and that's why he's having some success. Maybe shouldn't have said that. Kadri starts early, goes to the box, no Leafs power play. I tweeted, it's a disgrace. I tweeted, hey there all-star, hey there ref, yeah we see ya, thank god I paid money to see that. So Steve, what do you think of the penalty? Ah, uh, I need to, I need to like wash my mouth out after I say this. I'm disgusted that I'm gonna say this. You have no idea how much restraint it's taking to say this. Right call. I know, I know, don't, I hate it too. Just because it's the right call doesn't mean I still hate it. You can hate on Kiprios, but damn it, if he wasn't right after the game, he showed, he zoomed right in on the ref's face. He's talking to Kadri, he's telling him, don't do it. Put your stick down, get your stick set up. He doesn't do it, and it's a penalty. Don't get me wrong, I think it's stupid that that's a penalty, but the refs are just there to call the rules on a good day anyway. And this isn't just a case of the ref calling the rules, it's him literally saying to Nas something very specific. Put your stick down. He doesn't put his stick down, guess what? You're gone. It's like in the first game, the ref said to Leo Komarov, Put your visor down. Doesn't put his visor down, gets a penalty. I think it's stupid that it's a penalty. I kind of hate it, but the ref told him. Those are both relatively new things, but you know what's been going on for years when it comes to the playoffs or when it comes to specific referees? They might go in and talk to certain teams and tell them, look, hey, I'm going to be looking for slashing tonight, okay? You can do whatever else you want, but I'm going to be calling slashing. Hey, hey, I'm going to let you guys play tonight, but... I'm going to be watching the hooks. Don't go hooking, guys. Hey, hey, I can't look the other way on interference. I can't look the other way on tripping. Refs will tell you specific things. You go off of what they tell you. At least they're letting you know. This is a case of a referee telling a player something very specific and the player ignoring the official's instructions and the official calls it. And if you're mad that a Leafs power play got negated by that, remember that the penalty that led to the Leafs power play was a delay a game penalty because they flipped the puck over the glass. And how much do we like that penalty? Is, is that one great too? I promise you hockey will be a great sport when it's done. Quit picking at it! Now don't misinterpret this as me hating on Nazem Kadri. I think he was actually one of the better Leafs in this one. But it is an example of a ref telling him something specific. It might be dumb, it might be a stupid rule, whatever. But the ref is telling him something specific and he ignored it. That is just not the right move. You know what is the right move though? His Halloween costume! So I'm just on Twitter, minding my own business, and I check my mentions and everyone's going, ah! And I go, ah, okay, what? And I see this. Nazem Kadri Bob Ross! It's actually Nazem Kadri as Bob Ross! He did the thing! It's like the, when I draw, it, it's the thing! Now, question of the game, uh, do you think he watches? Answer, no, I don't think he does. And I want to believe so bad that he did Nazem Kadri Bob Ross because of the bit in these videos, but... That's a little pompous. I don't think he did it because of that. And Bob Ross, is, it's a popular costume. A lot of people are doing it these days. Bob Ross, popular guy. But oh, I want to believe. I saw a bunch of people tweeting, hey, you think Tyler Bozak's going to go as Buzz Lightyear? Well, you see, once upon a time, the Leafs had a head coach named Randy Carlisle, and he liked to use Bozak as the top center, and I may or may not have said that was a stupid idea for several years, and he blocked me on Twitter, so I don't think it's going to happen. Whether he did it on purpose or not, I am thrilled. And you know what? The Leafs lost, and I was yelling and getting all angry. Let's end on a couple nicer things. A couple a couple ways we can help. One, and this pertains to me personally, uh, I'm going to play a hockey game 
Uh, yep, you like on the ice. I'm gonna suck and it's gonna be bad and I don't care because it's for charity. Eric Lindros is gonna be in there, Dennis Marouk, uh, I'm gonna be on Ken Reed's team, Moose Power, and they're well aware of my ineptitude on the ice, but they're letting me on their team anyway. The charity that we are raising money for is near and dear to my heart. It's Easter Seals. Uh, they helped out my family a great deal when I was a child. If you don't know the story by now, um, my sister has autism and cerebral palsy and several things. And we got to go to Easter Seal summer camp and it was a great time. Yada, yada, yada. They do a lot of great things for kids with disabilities and families of kids with disabilities. If you would like to donate to Easter Seals and my endeavor to play very, very bad hockey, I will put a link down below. It'd be much appreciated. But something else you can do and something I think we can really get behind. Chris Johnson tweeted this. Take a look at this. Meet Becca, a Maple Leafs guest tonight. She has terminal brain cancer and is asking folks to share a random act of kindness Hashtag Becca told me to. Becca is hoping you'll share your random act of kindness at hashtag Becca told me to. Learn about her story here. And then he posts the link, which I will post in the description down below. Today, she told her mom that she views her cancer as a superpower to spread positivity. So how can you help with hashtag Becca told me to? Well, it's a random act of kindness. That's the thing. It's random. You get to choose whatever you want. Maybe you hold the door for somebody. Some guy pushing his luck a little bit, merging in traffic. Ah, uh, you know what? Let him in. Maybe donate some money. Donate some food around this time of year. That'd be good. Donate some clothes. It's starting to get cold. Whatever you do, just remember, Becca told me to. Because we can yell and scream, and believe me, I make a living doing it, but there are bigger things in life than hockey. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Brand new Panicle Pizza Steve Dangle podcast is up and on YouTube. And you know what? Becca told me to. Remember it.